All right, let's do this. Let's just do this before Shabbat. All right, we have, um, I don't even know what time Shabbat comes in, but I think we have like an hour and a half or so. Let's double check, 740. 528, all right, about two hours. Let's do this, guys. Better late than never. What's up, what's up? Pre-Sabbath tour discussion. Let's do it, guys. Something was on my mind today. Now I can't remember what it was. Oh, now I remember. Yeah. There's, um... The last little clip I put up had to do... Uh, I was dialing with a girl who was clearly educated by Chabad. There's this idea that's told over by Chabad rabbis that it's not, it's not um, something that appears in the Torah. And now that's cool. I mean, something could not appear in the Torah and still be purposeful, meaningful, whatever. This idea that everyone has a purpose in this world, right? The way they these guys typically explain it is that God made Jews to be Jews and he made uh, Gentiles to be Gentiles. And, um, you know, yeah, that, that, this is typically what they um, bring up as a reason why they don't proselytize or why uh, we should just take care of ourselves, which is the stupidest argument. I mean, I know people repeat things over and over again and they usually don't, um, they, if they don't talk to people who disagree with them much, they're never going to hear a different understanding, but that's such a stupid argument. God made you the way you are and uh, you should just be proud of that. That means God made you a Gentile. You should be proud to be a Gentile. God made you a Muslim. God made you, I don't even know what this means. God made you, right? I mean, one of your ancestors decided to convert to that. But they use it as an excuse to say that you shouldn't care about anyone who's not Jewish. Because, uh, you know, I mean, I guess God made you not to, to have good vision, right? Perhaps don't even bother getting glasses or having any surgery to repair in any, any sort of imperfection in your life. But anyways, not that I'm going to get anyone who could articulate the position any better, but uh, it'd be nice to, whatever. It's, it, it's, it's a shame that there's not enough religious Jewish people on TikTok to uh, bounce these ideas off of whatever okay you say you should be proud of who you are but also say judaism is better yeah no don't be proud of who you are I, I i never said be proud of who you are all right i mean strive to be who you can become the, the best version of you yeah i mean it's always going to be you whether you're a muslim atheist christian whatever all right uh yeah this notion that you're born x and you should be proud to be x i don't sound stupid but yeah, no, don't, don't, this is why whenever I hear Jewish people say that they're proud to be Jewish, assuming they're not religious, uh, it's the stupidest statement. I mean, some people let Jewish people get away with the silliest statements. It's really a form of, of contempt when you let people get away with silly things just because one, you either feel they can't deal with your response, deal in the sense that they will call you a bad name, they'll call you a a Yahtzee or whatever, if, if you try to point out how silly their idea happens to be. Uh, but it's a form of infant, of infantilization. There you go. I always get stuck on that. Okay, you're early tonight. Yeah, um, well, because Shabbos is in, at 7.40 my time. Well, technically, 7.52, 7.58. Uh, Anyways, fine. That's a religious difference, not a moral failing. Confusing those is bigotry. Yeah. No. Yeah, I know. For lunch on on Fridays, I usually, you know, have a big lunch and drink like two beers. So I'm like, ooh. Yeah, I don't know if I'm up for a debate, but let's do it. Hello? Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. How's it going? Uh, it's okay. Um, I had a question for you, if that's okay. Yeah, man. Uh, I've been trying to figure this out. How come the Jews uh, accepted Judaism? Like, I heard the story growing up. Um, basically, you know, all the other nations rejected it because, you know, this reason. Why did Why did the Israelites uh, accept uh, Torah from Hashem? Uh, 
So what does the Torah say? Yeah, because I've also heard many different stories. There's even a story, I guess, this is what Rashi says. The Rashi says that God held the mountain over their head and, it, and he said that if they don't accept Torah, then God would kill them all. You know, I mean, I've heard the weirdest things. I've really? also heard. Yeah, I, like, I never heard that. That's, well. Yeah, well, that's, that's the. Uh, dark. Yeah, like the most famous rabbinic interpretation of why Jews accept the Torah because God forced them to. Um, I thought I thought the reason why they accepted the Torah is because all the other nations said no, and then we said uh, Nasha Vanishma, like something right. like that. So the notion of Nasha Vanishma is in the Torah, but the notion of all the other nations saying no is not in the Torah. There's a Midrash that teaches that God went to all the nations and they said they didn't want Torah. So I think they got that from the idea that Abraham in some way I mean, represented God. I, and, I, I, uh, I mean, um, I, I, I mean, it would make sense that the nations, a lot of the nations, would reject it, because look, how, look, how, I mean, you know how hard it is to convert people to Judaism, so it would make sense it wouldn't be that popular to whomever, I, I suppose. You no? think so? I mean, I think it's harder to bring uh, an I mean, a secular you, you, or unaffiliated Jew back to Torah than it is to convert a Christian to Torah or to Judaism. Really? Yeah, for sure. I mean, look at Jewish outreach, right? Have you ever been on Birthright? Uh, no, I'm going in a few years. Right. So um, all these outreach organizations in Israel, they pour millions of dollars of trying to pull, like trying to get unaffiliated Jewish kids to stay in Israel for an extra two weeks just to learn in yeshiva. And most of these kids on Birthright are regular college kids from America who want nothing to do with religion, nothing. I mean, most, most Jewish people in general are atheists. Right. I think the last poll was like 54% of people who were born Jewish identify as atheists. Uh, compare that to how many people convert to Judaism every year, and it's mainly from Christianity. I mean, it's not from Islam. Uh, just because a Christian already believes in the Bible, already believes in God, you just sort of have to point him in the right direction. While, well, I mean, forget about Jewish. You would acknowledge that it's easier to convert a Christian to Judaism than it is to convert an atheist to Judaism, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, so being that most Jews are on the atheist side, this is why um, it's it's hard to believe that the Jewish people as a whole have some sort of pro proclivity to God and, and spirituality or Torah. It's actually the opposite from what I've seen. Um, now, there's a lot of Jews who do tshuva and come back to Torah, but it's, it's, it's so small that it's hard to believe that Jews have any religious proclivity to anything it, it, it's it's wait, 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 wait. we're yeah. calling them we're calling them atheists right we're calling them atheists but maybe they're still jewish culturally is that a thing oh uh, yeah it's it's for sure a thing it's not a thing in the torah but it's a thing nowadays right i mean since right. the state of israel was formed it really became a thing i don't think before the state of israel was formed there was many people who were proud to be jewish and not religious you know, I mean, now they have a crutch, right? Um, the truth is, I think the state of Israel has created more secular Jews than before. Because in the old days, people would just, I don't know, convert into some other belief system, get recycled to the system, and possibly, if we're lucky, they'd end up converting back in the future. But the state of Israel is a bubble. So it it's the only place throughout Jewish history where someone could remain Jewish and irreligious. Because most people who, who who would have dropped Judaism 200 years ago would probably have become some other belief system and and possibly have come back to Torah, but it's hard to com to convince an Israeli to 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 be religious. I mean, it's probably easier to convince them to be traditional. Yeah. Right? Like most secular Israelis keep Shabbat. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I I ever meet like I I used to I used to be one of those guys that would be on a street corner. And like ask people, are you Jewish? And get them to put on tefillin. Really? Yeah. So you were in Chabad? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So you, you're, you're. Uh, I mean, I, for some reason, I thought you weren't religious at all. I mean, in the past. Mm. Uh, yeah. So that's where I used to be. And um, I mean, you had people that even that were every person that said they were Jewish would put on tefillin. So obviously, I think religion matters to them to some extent. Yeah. But maybe they just don't want to practice it every day. Yeah. So I think that a lot of these guys are just superstitious, which is probably the first step towards wanting to become religious. Um, just like 
I don't know, even even secular kids have a bar mitzvah, right? Just because it's cultural. So mm -hmm. I don't know, is that enough or or um is that enough to keep you ethical? I don't I don't I mean I think it hurts the no. Jewish people. No. No, oh, if you're like a, you don't, um, now you need a, like a deeper connection, you know? Yeah, I'm not saying orthodoxy, you know, for example, Dennis Prager, let's say. I mean, like, he's not orthodox, but he's big on ethics. Amen. Good conversation. I'm sorry, I have to go now, but uh, right, no thanks for answering. Yeah, man, no problem. All right, have a good job. Okay, so uh, that's that's a thing. Culturally Jewish nowadays, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Well, I mean, I do know. I mean, being culturally Jewish ultimately hurt the Jewish people more than anything. We have to really acknowledge that 200, 300 years ago, when a Jewish person stopped being religious, uh, the their their parents pretty much sat shiva for them and treated them like you know the Jewish people actually lost the member. But nowadays. With the state of israel and i support the state of israel but if that's the only way you can solidify your jewishness right i mean it doesn't tell me much about your behavior nowadays if you tell me you're jewish maybe a thousand years ago if someone said they they were jewish they were part of the jewish people you would think like ah this person at least strives to be ethical um strives to do the right thing but nowadays it doesn't tell you much i mean i mean you could be an atheist jew you could be a muslim jew you could be a christian jew it, it doesn't tell me much about how you behave. And I think that's not a good thing. It, it's it's for sure not a good thing, especially when you have, I don't know, Jeffrey Epstein's out there, or people who are just so culturally Jewish that they build resentment, right? I mean, like when people think of Bernie Madoff, who do they think about, right? I mean, they think, well, he's Jewish. He must be religious. Truth be told, he may have been Shomer Shabbos. Uh, uh, but religious people end up suffering for the sins of secular people because of that. But the notion of a secular Jew didn't really always exist. So I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's uh, interesting. I actually think it's better for secular Jews to just become Christian or become uh, Muslim or, or join something, some ethical stream, just to have people floating around identifying as Jewish. Like, what is that, you know? Like, I mean, it's not just, what does God think about it? But how is your existence an ethical net gain on this planet? Just by calling yourself Jewish. Because I know on this platform, just by identifying as Jewish gets you special treatment. I don't know why. I mean, I think it's because people um, have a misunderstanding of what Jewish really means. Being Jewish doesn't it doesn't mean anything if you're just ethnically Jewish. It just doesn't mean anything ethically. Welcome, user. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? What can I call you? Uh, Asher. Asher, okay. Nice to meet you. Um, so you've always been Jewish, or you converted? No, no, no. I converted to Judaism like 25 years ago. I see. You? Have you always been Jewish? Um, just objectively, do you think Israel is a... What was that? <laughs> what? Say again? Can you ask the question? I'm oh, sorry. I'm just wondering... Uh, you said you support, you support the state of Israel, right. but I mean, can I ask you why you support the state of Israel? I mean, I know it's uh, probably a, a dumb question because you're Jewish, but I mean, no, no, it has nothing to do. Other with than with that, why, why do you support it? It has nothing to do with me being Jewish. I mean, I support Israel like I support any democracy. Oh, really? um, okay. Now, okay. it's it's sure. some sort of a unique democracy. I mean, it's not like any other democracy, but I for sure rather Israel be controlled by a bunch of secular Israelis and a bunch of religious Muslims, just because these secular Israelis allow the the religious freedom that such a, a place deserves, right? Because Christians, Muslims, and Jews appreciate it. While when it was under Islamic control, it was very difficult, especially under Jordan, you know, for Jews to walk in there and pray at the cult town and do all these things, you know, so it seems the problem with Muslims when they've been given the power, they become a bit tyrannical and power hungry. Uh, so I rather Israel not even be controlled by Orthodox Jews and I'm Orthodox, just because I know that they have a track record of also doing silly things, right? I want there to be sure. a separation of shul and state and synagogue. 
or in 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 Israel. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, what's better? All right. I mean, I'm not saying that b- being Muslim is wrong or it being under completely Muslim control is wrong, but I just think that given their track record, I'd rather the state of Israel be run by secular Jews than religious Muslims or even religious Jews. I see. Uh, in terms of, uh, from a purely religious standpoint, do you think that uh, Israel is in the Torah or, or, or the, the prophecy of Israel is in the Torah? Yeah, for sure. I mean, not the state of Israel, but the land of Israel. It's, I mean, it's all over the Torah. No, the state of Israel has no has no religious meaning to me at all. And I would say the vast majority of Orthodox Jews feel the same way. Uh-huh. I see. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just find it a little bit, uh, I was taken aback a little bit by, by when you said it, you don't think that it should be an Orthodox uh, Jewish controlled. Correct. I would have thought you said, well, I mean, this is a Jewish state. It should be religious, right? Well, I mean, truth be told, I mean, it shouldn't even identify as Israel if it's not going to be religious. So I would say that the traditional Haredi approach or ultra-Orthodox approach is a non-Zionist approach. So they support the state of Israel, but they don't endorse its existence from a religious perspective. All right. I mean, they appreciate the fact that there's a synagogue in every corner, um, but they uh, they understand that it's a secular government. And if God punished Israel in the past for not even being secular, because when Israel was exiled, they weren't secular and they weren't all worshiping idols. You can imagine how God's going to punish Israel now when Israel is is probably. Um, yeah, it, they're, they're a lot more irreligious, um, even from an ethical perspective, than their Islamic nature uh, with neighbors. So it's it's um, whatever. I see. And you said you were there. Yeah, I lived in Israel for five years. I mean, I'm an Israeli citizen. Uh, did you find it? Um, uh, like, what was your experience? I mean, as far as, far as being, uh, so did you find it like a, a safe place for Jews that, as, as it was been always been said? Uh, not so much. I mean, it's for sure safer for Jews in America than in Israel. Okay. I mean, I lived in a settlement and uh, we were we were guarded by, by machine guns and fences. It's, it's, it's not a safe place for Jews. That was the goal. That was the goal. Um, I mean, it's kind of a bit concerning that you have 7 million Jews packed into a country the size of New Jersey. And if someone wanted to wipe them out with, with a few nuclear weapons, they could. That's that's a bit concerning. Um, yeah, but when I moved there, I was more of a religious Zionist. And then living there, I became less optimistic. Uh, but I still appreciate it. I go back about once a year. I see. I see. Um, uh, okay, great. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, man. Appreciate no it. Take it easy. Have a good day. Thanks. Okay. When they wanted to pass the ban on proselytizing, uh, God, okay, I missed that one. Okay, well, Rusty Slav, I guess there's, there's, uh, as long as you know, it's possible to convert, right? How do you understand Shachan Aruch, Evan Hazar? It says what? I mean, I'm not going to look it up. I mean, your best bet is to, I mean, just post it here. Thoughts on the Zohar? I'm not a fan of the Zohar. I would say Israel is safer than what was in Europe. Uh, what is in Europe? Maybe. Like, I don't live in Europe, so I don't know. I can't speak for it. What are you so, so uh, hey, what's up, man? So my opinions on Rabbi Merit Lahana, I mean, I think he was a badass, 100% badass. I mean, I don't agree with everything he taught. I've read most of his books. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he was he was an impressive individual. You know, I used to be Kahana's back in the day. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's interesting. I, you know, I, he wrote some nasty stuff about converts. There was this book he wrote called To Be a Jew. Mm-hmm. And he kind of made fun of converts and whatever. He was a bit abrasive. He was a bit abrasive. But he was brave and he was honest. Meaning, I mean. I'm, I'm not saying I'm one now. I'm, I'm like, I'm talking when I was young, back in the days, when I was young and impressionable and super ultra Zionist and all that stuff. That I don't believe in any of that stuff now, but, you know, 
Teenagers are impressionable, right? Yeah, yeah. I um, I belonged to the JDL, uh, or like I hung around with the group in Israel that was part of the JDL, like, and I and I ran the website Kahana.org for five years. And I, I mean, I'm, I guess I still have it backed up somewhere, but I had all his articles and everything. Um, so I was involved in the movement in Israel. But I, I don't, I mean, like I said, I became less optimistic on the whole thing, especially his, his point of view, because he was for putting buses, like Arabs on buses and driving them over to Jordan, <laughs> you know, like that's kind of, yeah, yeah. And, and I believe he would have done it too. Oh, yeah. But he, he was very big in like a ballistic stuff he, with all these like multiple Mashiachs and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where I don't agree with that anymore, you know. I I I just like I'm not into Zohar and all that stuff. It's all silly to me. Uh-huh. Um, says, we're trying to convert people to Judaism, we need to talk about the Zohar and mysticism in it. Wait, uh, that's what we're talking about. Huh? I said that's literally what we were talking about. Yeah. No, I'm just reading the comment. Oh yeah. I think you're you're the same way, right? You 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 think that there's some interesting stuff in the Zohar, but none of it is real. Like it's all like or later added writings that have nothing to do with traditional Judaism. I view it as a book of Midrashim. Yeah, it. you know, and I think that I've been the most outspoken on the internet on this topic. I think I was the first one to ever make a video. Just type in Zohar. I mean, my channel was deleted on on Facebook on on YouTube, but I reuploaded it re-uploaded all the videos. So if you type in the Zohar, Ashameza, there's a video I did like 15 years ago, bringing sources and sources, just debunking it um, as as a book written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. But, uh, yeah, but the, the guy who found it, that, uh, what's his name, Moses de Leon, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like anything that's in it was actually from uh, Shimon Bar Yochai. It does a lot of stuff that contradicts the, including the language. Right. From the historical perspective, once you analyze it, like there's things that don't add up. Yeah, I mentioned it in my video. I mean, there's whole portions of Rashi in there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's he mentions Muslims. He mentions the Crusades. I mean, things that didn't exist in the time of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. He also enumerates the counting of of the Parshas because the Zohar was initially a commentary to the Torah. So it's it's broken down by Parshiot. Um, and he uses the one-year cycle when in the time of Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai, well, they would have used the three-year cycle because in Eretz Israel, they read the Torah every three years. Um, what else? Yeah, yeah that, that's the big one for me. That's the one that when I started looking into it and I knew the historical part of it that Zohar is structured in a one-year reading cycle, but it was a three-year reading cycle during Shun Bar Yohai. That was like, okay, then that makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, there's old right. Spanish in there too, like in the original Zohar. Also, I mean, the Zohar that we have nowadays is much bigger than the original Zohar. The Zohar was just a commentary to the Torah. Now there's like Tikkun Zohar, and it's like humongous. They just keep adding and adding and adding. This is why, I mean, they do it in all religions with Apocrypha. Mm-hmm. But the problem is Jews don't have the notion of Apocrypha. Like whenever someone finds a book claimed to be written by an earlier rabbi, they just absorb it in, just toss it in there. And then people, you know, they kiss the book and this and that. Well, at least Christians are honest enough to say like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, that we're not going to accept the gospel of, of Adam or the gospel of Mary. You know, Jews just toss it in there, toss it in there because they never have to really convince others of their belief system or care to debate. So as long as it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It- this guy is saying uh, it should have been Ben, not Bar. But no, when when Shimon Bar Yochai lived, they spoke Aramaic, not Hebrew. So it would have been Bar. So that's really that when someone believes that the Zohar is a forgery, he will usually refer him, they refer to him as Shimon Ben Yochai. Like if they believe in the Zohar, they'll say Bar Yochai. But um, but historically, it makes sense. He lived at the Roman time, so they spoke Aramaic. He would have said Bar Yochai, not Ben. But in the Gemara, I mean, does he appear? I mean, because like he was a Tana, right? And most of the works 
like the Mishnah, although it's written in a time uh, that that they would have spoke Aramaic, the bulk of the Mishnah is written in Hebrew. But the Gemara is written in Aramaic because it's in Babylon. So then I'm pretty sure that he would have appeared at, I mean, I have to double check. I have to do like, yeah. uh, I don't know, Spurgeous uh, search I mean, to see if he appears look, mainly as Ben Yuhai or Bar Yuhai, but I'm pretty sure it's Ben Yuhai. Look at this comment. To be a Jew, you have to believe in three books. One of them is Zohar. Oh, you know, I, See, that's what's frustrating. Not that, that uh, I mean, someone tolerates other people learning or believing in the Zohar, but when they start saying that to be a kosher Jew, like now you have to believe in this. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, who made you a theological gatekeeper? I mean, did the Rambam believe in the Zohar? You know, I mean, I mean, there's a, no, he there didn't. was no Zohar in the time of the Rambam, so I guess he wasn't a true Jew. But the Rambam would have cited all this mystical stuff if he, he but he never brings up any of the mystical stuff like that. So yeah. obviously he didn't know about it. So most people who are not big in the Zohar are typically big on the Rambam. Because the reason we have Shulchan Aruch nowadays is because Jews needed a halachic guide that was built partially on mysticism. Because the Rambams isn't. Although, the, I mean, there are mystical ideas in the Rambam. Uh, mm -hmm. In in um, like Hilchos Yisodei Torah, I mean, he talks about the notion of pardes and under like different ways to to view uh, whatever to learn. But, he, but he's studying uh, Talmud there, right? He's not bringing his yeah, own yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's mysticism in the Talmud also, yeah. you know, Merkava oh, but, and, and all these things. But this is, I mean, because it's a good question. Why do we have Shulchan Aruch if we had Mishnah Torah? I mean, Shulchan Aruch is not complete. Mishnah Torah is complete, meaning the Rambam covered all the halachas. Shulchan mm -hmm. Aruch only covers what we do today. Um, it's it's because the Rambam wasn't a makubal. I mean, he didn't really bring down Kabbalistic notions. And not to mention that the first book of halacha that was mass printed was Shulchan Aruch because it appeared right when the printing press came out. So people think like it was like it fell down from heaven. If you're, like, if you're a Jew nowadays, you go by Shulchan Aruch. No, it's because everyone had a copy of Shulchan Aruch also. Um, not necessarily Mishnah Torah. I mean, they had handwritten copies of like Mishnah Torah. And um, and the Kabbalistic aspect of it. So I, but regardless, if someone went strictly by Shulchan Aruch, they'd be going more by the Rambam than the average person who claims to go by Shulchan Aruch nowadays. The average person says they go by Shulchan Aruch, but it's not true. I mean, they throw in the Rama, Shulchan Aruch Arav, Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, Kabbalah. You know, they keep adding. They just say that because most people just regurgitate. Shulchan Aruch is ninety percent Rambam, probably ninety five percent Rambam. You know, and then of course all those other stuff peppered in there, but in terms of legal rulings, I mean, people who say that don't don't, don't know, they don't know. But anyways, yes, where Yosef Karo was a kabbalist, big time. Not only that, he has a book called um, called oh, man. I'm, I mean, I drank all this beer for lunch, and I'm like getting tipsy now. I can't even remember. You're starting ready for Shabbat ahead of time, right? Um, Preloading. Yeah, so yeah. So you're preloading for Shabbat? Near Besimcha, near my Oneg. Um, what's the book he wrote with the demon that, that, that I call it a demon? It's, uh, um, but he got possessed by the spirit of the Mishnah, and then his hand started moving and writing a book. Uh, Magid, Mish uh, Magid Misharan? I don't know. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, so he, he, he had a Magid, which is really, I mean, it's almost like similar to how is how Muhammad received the Quran. That an angel appears to them and basically possesses them and gets them to write a book. Ma Magid, uh, Magid Masharm. I, I, anyways, um, Magid, whatever. And I don't know why anyone would take someone like this seriously, who gets possessed by spirits to write whole books. And then we're supposed to elevate these books like, like, Ever. it's it's a shame it's a shame i mean they were supposed to believe that uh shimon bar yohai was had eye lasers that would nuke the whole villages so why not oh right no <laughs> it, oh uh was it shimon bar yohai or his son i think it was his both son. of them first first it was both of them and then his son did it again uh, after they came back out again right and he says you're destroying my creation you know, go back in the cave yeah, it said they were naked uh, up to their necks in in dirt because you're not supposed to study Torah naked. 
And uh, whatever. I mean, they well, they took the story from what happened to Yehesco. And then the carob tree and all this stuff. This is why I think in Lock Bomber, it's a big thing to eat carobs, which is this thing that grows on a tree that tastes kind of nasty unless you put tons of sugar in it. I mean, who's insulting me here? See, these people try me like I'm really Jewish. I and mean, what I know this uh, I wasn't Jewish, come on. It's when people don't have real arguments, it's, it's called ad hominems, right? Just yeah, no, start I, going, are, are you real rabbi, real Jewish or whatever? Like, you know, make an actual uh, valid argument instead. Yeah, it doesn't bother me, by the way. I mean, I know that, I mean, for sure, no one, no Jewish person on TikTok, and I could say this confidently, confidently, I mean, could come here and and defeat me on Judaism. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Okay, now, there are people who are smarter than I am, but they're just not very wise in putting things together. I mean, they could tell me what they believe, but for some reason, like for the main reason that Jews don't debate, they're not equipped to dialogue with the Jewish person who does debate. That's it. And consider that a challenge to all your rabbis. So go ahead and uh, invite them. What was the court asking? By the way, hey, court, I haven't seen you in ages. I saw him asking, what's the relationship between Canaanite polytheism and Judaism? I'm sure there's a relationship. Yeah, for sure. Maybe that we should respond like Muslims and say there's no relationship at all. It's it's completely self-contained. It's completely logical, you know, and we can prove everything, not just in the Torah, but even in our 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 Islamic literature as divine and proper interpretations to to our source material. Right. I mean, for some reason that works. You know, for people. We, we have both options, right? I mean, if you if you want to answer in the orthodox way, you're going to say that, no, it's all from God, and they all drop down at Sinai on their head. If you want to answer in the historical perspective, sure, there's influences, right? Yeah. No, the bigger question is, are those influences, um, like, do they really have an effect in our theology? And not really at the end of the day, at least not according to the Torah. But according to rabbinic I, I, Judaism, for sure. Right or creed, but not according to the text. I mean, it's it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make. I think our belief way. system evolves just like every other belief system evolves, right? Yeah. I mean, it, sure. what what it was there, like you know, you, you clearly can see that Judaism at the time of judges versus Judaism at the time of kings versus Judaism of the first temple versus Judaism of second temple. They're all different religions, right? They, they, well, truth be told, I don't think we know much about Judaism of the first temple. And I don't think we know much about Judaism of the second temple either. All we know is, well, okay, during the second temple, maybe, right? Because Rabbi Akiva and all these guys are post 70 AD. So mm -hmm. I guess we know a little bit about Ezra and Hillel and like Rabbi Shimon Tzaddik, but not much, by the way. I mean... We we do know that the like for example the the Mishkan stood the Shiloh right like that that kind of stuff but at that time we we know that there were two temples during the split like the two kingdoms um, you know and and who knows what specifically they had like for, it's very likely that they had two arcs right that there was an ark in the northern kingdom and the ark of the southern kingdom oh well, that's hard to believe though. You know, because why? Well, because someone would have been lying. <laughs> you know, I mean, I try to harmonize both because I think that according to the Peshat, that like you're able to have technically two places and claim to be that God chose both those places. I get it. I mean, because you could have Chachamim in the in the north, and and in this case, Levium and other Chachamim in the south, saying that this is like base of a hero, the place that God chose. However, you can't have two arcs. Um, you could have two menorahs, by the way. Supposedly, well, they had two menorahs. Like one was for show, and one um, like stayed inside. But how can you have two arcs? I mean, I, I mean, unless you would split like the luchot into two, like separate ones, right? I mean, I guess they were two. Um, but uh, that would be a bit problematic. But could you have a temple without an ark? We did during the second temple. So, anyways, welcome court. Hi, I've been here before. Hi, Ruben. Long time no see, my friend. Hey, Court. You're the James Brown fan, right? 
I am not a James Brown fan. I mean, I like some of his music. Oh, never mind. No, okay. I don't think you remember. I think uh, we talked a long time ago. You thought maybe I was secretly Jewish and pretending. You are secretly to... Jewish. <laughs> oh, I, okay. I used to be LDS. I used to be Mormon. Now I'm um, kind of agnostic. I don't know what I am. Oh, um, okay. Do you remember that? Uh, maybe, but I love Mormon. From all, it's from a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, I haven't been live on TikTok for a long time. So the reason I asked about the connection potentially between Canaanite polytheism and Judaism is just because I've been like kind of hyper fixated lately on studying like different historical polytheism, different, different like groups and, and beliefs and stuff. And I was studying it a little bit, the Canaanite polytheism. And it was interesting because even before like Judaism really emerged, it's interesting that Canaanite polytheism was already starting to move towards um, monolatry. So like even worship, even though they conceived multiple gods, they were saying you only worship one God. And then eventually there were also movements even towards more monotheism. So I just thought it was interesting. And I, I always get annoyed though, by some of these people. It's, it's one of the things I hear sometimes on the Dawa lives that Jew, Jewish people are secretly polytheist. That's not true. I think they're as monotheistic as people who practice Islam. Um, I don't think that, we're that monotheistic. That wasn't, I don't think we were monotheistic at all originally. I think like even the first now, couple of times and after that, they they still had uh, like they they had the the chief god, but I think there were other gods that right. they kept. They were like monolatrists, right? They were monolatrists. Yeah, they, they the monotheism is something that developed later with the introduction of Greek philosophy into it. I think right, but it's an attack you hear sometimes made that Jews aren't really monotheistic and I it, but that, that, I just wanted to clarify that, that right? I just because, wanted to clarify that's not my intention yeah, but, at all but what I'm saying is like when somebody says that like how does that affect us right now but we are right now we're monotheistic who cares that 2000 years ago they had other notions because the the Judaism we believe now is what we're talking about not about Judaism like we're, we're nobody's saying you need to go and sacrifice your cow, uh, you know, on the mountain right now, right? right. So, I also want to clarify that I'm not saying all Dawa people will say that. I I have some very good friends who do those Dawa lives and and try to bring people into Islam. I'm just saying some yeah, that's individuals. That's all they have. Yeah. That's that's all they have to bring to the table. But I'm just saying some individuals. Possible misunderstanding of of what God is, but if you go straight straight through the Torah, truth be told, monotheism is not really a tenet of our religion. Yes, we believe in God, and yes, He says that He's one. But how many times is that mentioned in the Torah? I mean, there's probably more laws on on what you can eat or on one specific animal that you can eat than about God being one. It just seems like people nowadays, especially Muslims, was with this whole notion of tahid like has they be they've created cannibalistic monotheism where they're willing to to chew up and spit out any other ethical person who believes in the bible if they don't first you know accept um aristotle and plato as deciders of how to properly philosophically dissect god you know this is completely foreign to the jewish religion it's trivial it see islam has to carve a place like for itself, right? Because there's no reason for Islam once you had Judaism. For sure there's no reason for Islam once you had Christianity, right? Uh, but they had to find something different. They had to find something that they disagreed on. And it pisses me off when Jews kind of go into that and say, oh, Muslims have a more pure understanding. It's completely destructive. It exists only to disorganize religion, essentially. You know, because they brought nothing new to the table with the exception of belief like believing in, in the Quran, in Muhammad as the final messenger and prophet, and this un, unhealthy understanding of the oneness of God. Unhealthy in the sense that they're going to throw everyone else under the bus if, if you don't um, represent the God of the Bible by their terms. It's so stupid. It's so trivial. 
truth be told, our ethical behavior wouldn't change one bit if if you believed God was an actual partnership. Not one bit. It wouldn't change one law, right? I mean, assuming that you still believe is one, but it, there's some sort of complex unity how Christians teach it. I mean, what would really change? It's such a trivial notion. Jews in biblical times had their hands full fighting unethical idolaters. And the only people these people fight are Christians and Jews, right? You know, so, oh, okay, you know, very impressive. We civilize the world and you just like put a cherry on top. But you're the final religion? It just sounds stupid. I, I, I don't know. I feel like some pretty broad strokes were just painted with that I don't necessarily agree with when it comes to Islam. Right. I, I do think that Islam has made some significant contributions to society, especially if you look at the golden right. age of Islam, uh, I mean, with a philosophy, arithmetic. Um, I also think that it's a little unfair to generalize. It feels a little bit, I, I'm trying to general, I'm not trying to generalize myself when it comes to anybody that I've brought up. And oh, I'm all for generalizing, by the way, as long as I'm able to give examples. Islam, for the most part, could be placed in a certain box, okay? I mean, the idea that they believe that our Torah has been corrupted and they have the only true message and they only, and they have the purest understanding, like of the one God. This is this this we could generalize on because this is the foundation of Islam. All right now, I know TikTok has a lot of variations of different Muslims and stuff like that, but for the most part, I would say that's the foundation of of Islam. I have no issue generalizing. Uh, uh, I don't know why we're talking about Islam now. I think we were we were focusing on Judaism. <laughs> we should get back to that part. No, yeah, no. But, I mean, uh, I like Islam and I like Christianity. I just think Judaism is better. I mean, I, no, for sure. I, I agree from that. I'm just saying, like, we kind of lost track when went to a different topic now. Oh, no. Well, let them come. Mm. This is, I mean, consider this a dog whistle. I think yeah. that uh, I, I think that I uh, inadvertently brought the subject up because I was trying to point out, even though I think that Canaanite polytheism and Judaism share a historical root. I'm, I wasn't trying to say that modern Jewish people, by and large, are polytheistic. That's not what I was trying to say. I, I, I think, that. like, uh, Rambam actually, yeah, I think Rambam explains this. I, I, I agree with his explanation. He He's saying that um, th there's a difference between is there one God or many gods, and did people believe in one God versus many gods? Um, the thing is, there is like just because people were mistaking at the past and they created these extra like sub characters because they needed like you know uh something that they could relate to better before they get to god so they had this like intermediaries and believed in the intermediaries it doesn't mean that those things existed it just means that that they went through extra steps to get to god but the concept of one God, it, it was still there. It's just, you know, it, it takes time for people to evolve and, and get better understanding and better philosophy. But, you know, so so this is what I would say. I would say that, that that's why I said it doesn't matter that the people, you know, 3,000 years were more primitive and they had to add extra things in the way. And now we evolve past it with a better philosophy, better learning, better understanding. And so we, you know, we could say, yeah, there's no partners to God. There's just one God. And and we can live with that and don't, don't need to, like, say, that, oh, just because they, they believed in the pantheon of gods that destroys the whole religion somehow. Yeah, I don't think Jews ever believed in a pantheon of gods, by the way. I mean, yeah. for sure that, that would be contrary to the Torah. But believing that there's some sort of partnership, I don't think it's 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 contrary to the Torah at all. I just don't believe in it, I, just because I'm a minimalist when it comes to God. Less is more. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, so, like, why? But, but however, I mean, if someone did, like, what would I argue with a guy over? Who cares? Okay, we are convinced. You know, God. I mean. I mean, God the fist, God the finger, who cares? It, it doesn't matter. It's still the, the God that gave you the Torah, right? Is that the same God we're talking about? 
because it doesn't matter if you're a monotheist. You could be a monotheist and still be an idolater. And this is what Muslims don't understand. This is what the Ramam couldn't understand, right? That only because you believe in one God doesn't say anything about you. Absolutely nothing, right? By the simple fact that that one God doesn't necessarily mean that you're worshiping the same God as I am, right? Yeah, it's one, but like I always say, a turtle could be your one God. It's still idolatry. For some reason, that line of thinking gets Muslims to comment all over my channel like, what do you mean? You're an idiot. If you're a monotheist, you're for sure not an idolater. I know that's what you heard, and most religious people just regurgitate what they hear, and they never really think. And Jewish people do the same thing. They're like, well, Muslims worship one God. That means you're not idolaters. Not true. You know, who cares if you worship one God, right? It, 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 I don't believe it. the Torah teaches two gods, but if there were two gods, what, how would that change anything? Nothing really. Nothing would change in terms of ethics, which is really what matters. I, I think... Um... I just want to bring up, I know Courtney hasn't had a chance yet to speak. I just want to say something real quick there. When it came to um, anthropology, uh, there used to be, it used to be kind of this widely held view in the Western world that religions developed, developed along an evolution of advancement where they kind of started out animistic, meaning they saw like everything was up live rocks, stones, trees, everything, then polytheism and then monotheism. That view is widely rejected now in the anthropology community. And it's no longer considered like when Reuven, you say primitive ideas, those are still ideas that are for a lot of people, a living idea, like the idea of animism is still alive for a lot of indigenous people and polytheism to an extent in different schools of Hinduism. I know obviously you're Jewish and you favor monotheism, but but to me, the idea that these ideas are primitive, I mean, Hinduism has had a very advanced philosophy for ancient, ancient history, a history that it shares with the Jewish people a lot. There's been a lot of cross-cultural, you know, exchange between the Jewish people and the Hindu people. And also indigenous peoples have, have had very advanced animistic systems. So. I just don't like the characterization of it being primitive, but I'm also trying not to be offensive. I mean, I, I, I'm also not uh, trying to, yeah. to seem like I'm easily offended. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say that regardless of whether it offends people or not, the, to me, uh, believing in a God of wind and God of sun and God of thunder and all this, it's just primitive to me. And I'm sorry whether it offends people or not. Well, I think really the case should be understood that uh, Judaism today as a, quote, monolithic religion is truly a later developed idea. Uh, Exodus 20, verse 3, it quite literally means you shall have no other gods against my face or before me. So that's henotheism. That's not monotheism. It's henotheism. Now, Judaism and Christians both have developed the idea of monotheism in the understanding that uh, it's the only God we worship, but henotheism is essentially that you have one God. It literally means one God, but one God as the supreme deity for which all other divinities, such as powers, angels, etc., descend below that, which I think is where the idea from um, a pantheon came from. Essentially, that's what you find in Deuteronomy 32 is a pantheon. Uh, from the Dead Sea Scrolls, because that was kind of removed from the Masoretic text. Okay, so Mansoor is on the line, and I'm pretty sure that he has to re that he wants to respond. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. fight about idolatry you, now. Yeah, he wants to tell you how you got all your statements about Islam wrong. No, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, okay, I would disagree on the point that you were saying. Sorry, my uh, I have COVID nineteen here, and I'm my voice is a little bit. Yeah, I have a little bit problem, so I may not stay longer here. <laughs> so, the thing is that in Islam, we Muslim, it is extremely important, extremely important, much more important than our lives, than our food, than our our water, whatever is we have in this world. The oneness of God is extremely important for us, mm -hmm. and that's why we Muslims believe that there is uniquely one God, one no, God, one Creator. Who has, yeah, but yeah. I didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, this is my um, my point from the Quran and Hadith. Yeah, but I believe it's a trivial point, essentially. I mean, ethically, oh, yeah. well, it's an ethically trivial yeah. point. I mean, if you believe in two gods, would it change your ethical behavior in any way as a Muslim? Ethical behavior. 
Uh, ethical behavior. Uh, what do you mean by this? I didn't understand your question, sir. Do you know what ethics is? Uh, yeah, I understand it yeah. in ethics, or, but but I, I have to understand what's what's your yeah, your okay, point so, for. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Quran is split up, or an educated person could split up the Quran just like we split up the Torah. There's ceremonial commands, right? Commands between you and God, and commands yep. between you and other people. So ethics or morality is how you affect other people. We keep God's commands um, because he tells us to do it, but they don't always necessarily make sense to us. However, not stealing, not unaliving people, that makes a little more sense. How would believing in, let's say, more than one God uh, change your ethical behavior according to Islamic law? Oh, according to Islamic law, then the person would become a kind of outside Islam. It, the the foundation the foundation of Islam is based on the very first commandment, which is uh, really important, and the oneness of God. the The person, from ethic point of view, uh, in the community that depends on the community. But from my personal point of view, the when the person is outside Islam, then the person is polytheist. We view that no, person as uh, yeah. Was, you, you, like would his behavior, ethical behavior, change at all? Ethical behavior, that means that would he be less benevolent, that would be that would he be less likely would to give up his life for his religion? Um, how would that change if he believed in the Trinity, let's say, as a Muslim? Wow, oh no, 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 no. Astaghfirullah. A Trinity is absolutely no, kufr. I know. According I to Islam. Yeah, yeah, I, you last, understand. Last I understand. Last, let but me try. Man yeah. Mansoor, what he's asking you is Let's pretend that everything else stays the same. You have same Quran, same laws, same Sharia, same everything. But instead of uh, Allah telling you that there's one God, he would have told you that there's three. How would that change your religion? Because God hasn't, uh, because God hasn't told me that God is three persons, for example. Oh, then, uh, but that, that's not, not a question for us. Yeah, that's you. not a question for us. I lose my patience here. Look, yeah. I mean, just be honest. It wouldn't change yeah. your religion at all ethically. That's the answer. <laughs> it, it for sure. I believe that the Quran is ethical enough that if you would change one prerequisite, that that God is two in one instead of with well, that shirk was okay, Islam ethically wouldn't change, right? And I'm giving ethically according in the community when the people people are with with each other that that depends on the person but the point is according to islam uh, islam the, the quran and the authentic sunnah hadiths their their sacred law which are which are given to us uh and uh, i have some questions for you rabbi as well no, but okay. hold on yeah, yeah. but yeah. you're capable of using thought experiments right you're capable of doing thought experiments so that's what I he's asking so. you to do a thought experiment I don't, Ruben, to I, I don't think so. I know what you're, I don't think so. I mean, I truly don't think that they would ever do that because it's almost like if I, if I lend over to a yes, I could do a thought experiment that ultimately shows that my religion would change if I did not believe in this, this very strict assertion of monotheism, then it would be almost blasphemous. It's, it's yeah. not, look, if for some reason a religious Jewish person said mm -hmm. that they found a text, a text that told them to behave unethically. Almost every Orthodox rabbi would be out protesting, saying this is unacceptable because we're ethical first and we're Jewish second, right? But for some reason, if that would occur in Islam, I don't think people would react the same. Okay. We that's, got, yeah, that's a different kind of question. That's a different kind of question, which is not a, we, even we Muslims are not thinking about that that thing, right? No, I mean, that, you don't how think about that, ethics. You just think it, about creed and and how to grow no. Islam. But I think no, it's no, 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 no. Uh, no, no. Let me just explain it. Let me just explain it. Yeah. Let me just explain this. So, <laughs> God is the moral lawgiver. And God is the giver of guidance. We Muslims believe that the Quran and the Hadiths are the moral law that has moral law and that has the, the rights of the creation with the creation and the right of the creation with the creator. This is how we Muslims are weaving. There is no question in our mind that if God was two in one, then what would have happened according to the ethics? It, it, there is no question in any muslim's mind that if god was this if god was that because allah answers that question for us mm -hmm. that he is one if there were two gods equally uh, equally for example uh, yeah they were equal they would they would have destroyed each other 
that that, that is a logical answer for okay, us yeah. so according to ethics there is so, no question in our mind yeah we so, have a Quran, different responsibility yeah. on our shoulders because when islam came on the scene people already knew about allah when they knew about the god of the bible however in the book of exodus he was just being introduced to humanity so it seems that the jewish people had the hard task of validating god as god only because god claimed to be god to the jewish people that wasn't enough because it'll be like okay there's thousands there's millions of gods why are you any different the god in the torah had to prove himself worthy of the title by his goodness this is something that he didn't have to do in islam because it came so so recently right that it's kind of like yeah i heard of you because i read about you in the torah so Jews from the beginning were always struggling with God, saying that, you know what, prove to me you're God. Show me how you're different than any other God, and he does it. So this is why if he would tell us anything that seemed unethical, we would drop him in a heartbeat. But for some reason, if the Quran said do X and Y, even though you yourself is not, con you're not convinced ethically that that's the right thing to do, you would do it anyways. Because if loving the Lord is wrong, you don't want to be right. I mean, to quote, coming to America. It's also, the question is, sorry, Mansoor, re real quick. Okay. The main question uh, being posed is, what would, what is, do you see as the more important concept? The the law that Allah gives you and, and keeping this law or the philosophical nature of Allah? What, what, where, where is your focus? That That's the question. With the ethical, philosophical nature. I mean, I just... Yeah, just ethical, yes. So the ethics of the law or the philosophical nature of Allah? Uh, yeah, the first, uh, the first thing for us, which is really important, we cannot say that in, um, one thing is important than the other. All of the things are important for us, but the very first thing, which is really, really important than anything, that is the belief in the unique one God. That is the most important thing. Another point is that Quran is absolutely ethical. Quran is teaching morality, ethics, <laughs> um etiquettes to, to to the people how to deal with the community how to be nice charity givers i can explain that a lot but um, there is nothing i can see that that is unethical in islam no, for example that's not what i'm cannot, saying but first yeah, of all sure, sure, well, that's not what we're saying but you started off i think you just answered the question that in islam there aren't greater laws than others it's all so, i mean sort of the same and it's not like that in judaism clearly like we know what's a greater law because of the punishment that's attached to it unaliving someone is more important than not eating pork right or not unaliving someone is 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 more important than mixing wool and linen but it seems like in islam you don't really care it's sort of just all the same it's it's not an Islam. It's I think it's the, the you know you gotta narrow it down that it's Mansur's answer, uh, not the entire Islam's answer. Right. But I, I think. Know. Yeah, but what is it? Here, look. I mean, he's talking to a Jewish person, and I'm speaking in behalf of Judaism as much as I differ from many Jews. But don't. I mean, if you clarify it like that, I mean, you're like giving Islam a pass. I mean, he's defending Islam right now, and he claims to speak. I mean, he's Sunni, and he I would say is more knowledgeable than the average Muslim. Okay, uh, I'm going to say like this, Mansoor, maybe let me try to present it differently. The question is, let, let, let's to make it a full thought experiment, is uh, if you're claiming that the nature of God to you is more important than the law this God gives, then if, uh, you know, if you got commandment now from... From the from this God whose nature you fully agree with that He's unique and one and all this, but the law, new law came, making it uh, unethical and bad, and told you to look, do all kinds of unethical acts. You would have to follow that law anyway because the nature of that God is what's important to you. Where Asher is saying in Judaism, it comes from the other way around, and we our focus is on the ethics of the law and if somebody comes and proves to us that nature of this god is not one but three or whatever it doesn't affect the outcome because the outcome is the importance of the ethical law not the philosophical nature of god well the irony the irony of this conversation is that reuven and i have had a very similar debate me presenting at the time as an atheist i'm I don't know what to call myself anymore. I'm a secular agnostic person. I, I, you and I had a de debate a long time ago talking about the Euthyphro dilemma found in Plato's writings about Socrates, where we talked about do gods love piety 
because it is righteous, meaning that there is an ethical law outside of the gods, or do or is something piety because it is loved by the gods, meaning that there is a law because it is what gods love. Okay. So the irony here is that it seems like at your time, Ruben, your answer was without God, there can be no law. And so therefore, it it, it seems like you went with this the second answer to me. That's fine. Right. Right. You know, we're not discussing that here, Mansoor. Yeah. We just respond to Reuben. I mean, this seems. I mean, it should be more like a religious. This is a religious discussion by two religious people. You know, an outsider's perspective is just going to knock it off track. With all due respect, court. So go ahead, Mansoor. Please respond to what Reuben said if you remember what he said. Uh, yeah. So I did not hear uh, Reuben because there was uh, a lag for me. Uh, so oh, I can I, repeat I heard, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I okay, but I, I want to. Yeah, so, I want to. I want to finish my points because I'm going to forget that. I, I want to finish because I was in the middle and I forgot okay. that thing. Because in Islam, as I said before, and I had discussion uh, with you that in Islam we view sins in different categories. For example, the Christians view all sins all of the same. For example, stealing a candy, they believe the Christians believe stealing a candy is equal to unaliving a person, according to their understanding. Not but exactly. Islam, I mean, not exactly. <laughs> Yeah, when they I understand. Sin, they on they keep though. you away yeah. from God, you know, but not necessarily that all sins are are obviously the same. I mean, right. One, yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to finish. I want to finish the point that you can you can respond to me later. Okay. So the the, the point is in Islam we don't weave like that. The very first thing, which is the most important thing, that is the oneness in belief and oneness of God. Then it has d different grades. So there are major sins. There are smaller sins. Another point is we. As in entirety, we view the Quran as a sacred law, as the word of God from the very first word to the last word. That is important for us. And uh, another point is uh, that I, I was uh, supposed to say, for example, that uh, the, the, the view, if God, for example, was three in one, as, I, as you said before, would that affect? I don't think so like that. But if God had... If God was like that, then he would have clearly said that I am two in one or three in one like that. But it doesn't it doesn't work like that way. God is one and also we follow the Quran. All right. Yeah. 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 We can answer here. There's no more yes. questions with Mansoor. I mean he's not gonna play along. There's no, no, let me let me repeat it. No, no, don't don't. I mean he's not gonna give in. I mean he's a true believer. No, can I answer? I mean, can I answer? Can I answer it? Yeah, here Muhammad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a Muslim. So, so basically, so basically, Rabbi Asha, what you're saying is that um, if, if, um, if, for example, a stock for life, if the, you know, if somebody found out God was three one or something, would that change the ethics in Islam? Would people be worried about the ethics in Islam? That's basically what you're asking, right? So yeah. yeah. If so, if somebody if somebody changed the ethics in Islam, would we Muslims have a problem with this the same way we would have a problem with if somebody said God's three one? That's basically what you're saying, right? Mm, yeah, we have an issue like, like you Jews, you believe, for example, like it's like, like would we have an issue with, with that person it's in the similar way as no, 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 of course, we would have an issue with that person, with that person yeah, that yeah, person. would that person's behavior from an ethical perspective or a moral perspective change in any way just because he believed in, in shirk? So, so that's that's so his um, so obviously, that's that's dependent on the person, that's 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 an individual issue, like we don't know that. We, don't, right. we, we can't say we can't say what he will. We can't say. No, but if he kept but, every other what, what Islamic say, law, what? if he kept every other Islamic law but that one, yeah, I don't know. That's that's, that's, that's on him. If he's if, no, if he's so following say, okay. the same ethics, say, obviously his ethics will change. I mean, if he's following, if he's following the same ethics in the Quran, then of, of course his ethics won't change. Then right, correct. But that's that's yeah, if he's so sticking to those same laws. It is those same. Somewhat but, of a but, trivial but, point but, when you what, bash what? Christians over the head only on this area when ethically you guys agree on everything else. But, yeah, but the thing, the the the, the thing is though, how do, how does that make any sense? I don't understand. No, no, the the, 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 the whole discussion was. That's a theological problem. Let me explain, Mohammed. The, uh, from the beginning, that the point of discussion was whether or not. Uh, the the law of god was affected by his nature and so the point we were trying to make is if the if we have the law of god and this law 
is ethical and it makes us into better people and it builds better society and it improves the world, that then us being incorrect on a philosophy of God and misunderstanding his nature is a trivial point that's not important. What's important right. is us, uh, you know, analyzing the law and keeping the law and following the law because it makes the world a better place. It makes us better people. And and the argument of a philosophy of a nature of God can be like, it, it, they're not as important, basically. You know, once you're perfect already, then you can argue about the nature of God. I think that moralizing yeah, yeah, the nature that's, of God, that's, that's, can, I, can I say something real quick? I, I think that moralizing the nature of God making it a moral issue like like what i think i I think asher and ruben have an excellent point i do think it does influence people's behavior because of this if if you think that anyone who doesn't view god in the exact same way that you do is committing a, a form of heresy and uh, and should then be converted or even potentially forced into conversion that is a big influence on your behavior and that is something that has happened historically that is something that historically happened. Yeah, but no, no, nobody, nobody, nobody believes that. Though. That's just an assumption. Nobody believes that. That's that's between you and God. That's blasphemy, which is a sin between you and God. Like, like in the Quran, tells us uh, strictly that we can't force anybody into religion anyway. So if somebody else has a different, uh, has a different view of God's nature, that's you know that's between him and God. That's not necessarily a moral problem uh, compared to uh, uh, to towards human beings. That's a moral problem towards you and God. Like for example, like. Like um, there's 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 many other moral issues towards you know you and God. For example, if someone that's secretly gay, that's not you know going out in, in society and you know you know you know showing his gayness or doing gay acts in society. He's not affecting society, but he's doing it alone in in in, in his um in privacy. That's between him and God. That's a moral problem between him and God. It's not a moral problem between him and you know somebody else. So you're talking about you you guys are talking about an issue. That affects society. You know, you, that's what you're ma mainly talking about, right? But yes, yeah, I, I can agree with you that. I can, I can agree with you. I can, I can agree with you that the, the, the nature of God doesn't affect. It doesn't affect um, what do you call it? Um, the morals of society. Of course, it doesn't. It just affects the morals between you and God. Mm. Okay, that's it. I mean, that was a I great response, and, and I accept yeah. the response. But most yeah, yeah, that was the whole one, point of it. One yeah, and one other thing which I uh, I remember that uh, first of all, uh, and I would like to say that we Muslims view the Jews as monotheists. Uh, there is a verse in the Quran which is speaking about that some Jews they were they believed uh, that Ezra was the son of God. So we Muslims believe uh, we don't believe that all Jews are uh, blasphemers or idolaters. No, we Muslims view Jews who are holding to the law of the Torah or the first commandment and the second commandment. We believe them as monotheists. So that is our point. And it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. 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 I mean, the notion of a like monotheism, monotheism but... you know, monotheism doesn't appear in the Jewish Bible. I mean, it's not even a Hebrew word. I mean, it's, it's, um, yes, God is one, but what does that really mean? Uh, it's, it's up to your interpretation. In the Talmud, there aren't arguments about the oneness of God. It, I mean, it's not till Rafsada Gaon and Maimonides, really, because of Islamic influence, that we even started having this discussion. I mean, even in the time of Uncleus, let's say Uncleus, like the great commentator, he he taught against anthropom anthropomorphizing God. Okay, but uh, so it it wasn't so so. I mean, such a big deal because we had the bigger issue of dealing with unethical idolatry, you know, versus this blasphemous idolatry. Because the notion of blasphemy is also not in the Torah either. The notion of heresy is not in the Torah. The notion of apostasy is not in the Torah. Right. Uh, there is. Well, um, yeah. No, heresy is in the Torah. Come yeah. on. You can, uh, well, where? Apostasy is also in the Torah. Where? Leviticus, yeah. In Leviticus chapter 24, verse yeah. number 14. Well, so let's oh, all the laws against terms. idolatry yeah. is there, right? Yeah. All the laws against idolatry is the laws on um, heresy. If somebody yeah, comes to you and teaches you diff about God differently, you're supposed to unalive them. But idolatry is not apostasy. Right? I mean, apostasy idolatry is not that apostasy? We're still religious but you're holding by an idea that's not generally accepted. I mean, just like heresy, it's basically going against what's unpopular. Um, if, if nowadays, if for example, Karaites, I mean, Karaites in the Jewish world are considered apicorsum, right? I mean, they know something about the Torah, but they come to different conclusions than the accepted conclusion. 
There is no accepted conclusion in the Torah because no one really knows what God's talking about, right? There's judges who come to a consensus of what they think it means, and we have to act it out like the judges say. But we don't have to be convinced with their conclusions necessarily. But we know that for a society to move forward, there has to be some consensus. The notion of heresy, how the Rabbi Mizrahi and your woman called everyone a heretic, means if you believe something that's unpopular, you're a heretic. I, but and but at the same that, time, uh, Arthur, but you, we what do what have what commandment. What Hold on. We do have commandment to follow what the priests say and what the judges say and what the prophets say. And if you go against it, you, you're a criminal, basically, right? And you get lashes or you get on the life. So we do have that right in the Torah. Yeah. And we also believe that the Samaritans claim to be priests also, and that Samaritans don't even believe in, in, in Tanakh, right? I mean, they only believe up to the book of Joshua, and their Joshua is different than ours. You know, so... It's hard to know what the final rules are from the Torah alone. This is why I'm saying that the notion of heresy, at least according to the plain Peshat level of the Torah, is just not there. Right? And it's rarely used in the Mishnah. A min or, or a min in the Mishnah is, is Arba Minim. It's talking about like the four species for sukkahs. But in the Gemara, it's already talking about possible Christians or, or possible Christians, because it doesn't say Christians, or people who just believe what's unpopular this notion that someone has the authority to give over consensus over belief is nowhere in the torah because the levites aren't to tell us what to believe they're tell us they're there to tell us how to keep how to certain practice. laws and what to do I mean, you can believe in what you want it's hard that god is going to judge you for not being convinced of a certain idea if you're convinced that god is two in one you're just philosophically convinced but you believe in the torah 100 you're telling me god's going to punish you because you're not going to pay lip service to what's popular but that what does that even mean uh, let, let me just say some few words from the quran from islamic point of view in in, in islam quran uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran that he is one alone there is none like him none like him which means that he is one alone one mean one that doesn't mean one in two and three like this. so muslims they don't have this idea whether god is two in one like that so that is very clear according to the quranic uh verses uh, we we understand who god is and there is none like him and uh, associated yeah, the quran with him is only 1200 like that. years old 1300 that we're talking about a book that was written 3000 years ago it's easy for the quran to claim all these things when the the rabbis uncleus right uh uh most of the Geonim already laid down the philosophical framework of what Islam would later become. It's, it's easier to, to build a religion off of later developed ideas. The Torah had no ideas to build off of. It was carving it from the beginning. So this is why when the Torah makes a statement, we believe that it carries more weight than something that was just said 1300 years ago. So if the Torah doesn't deal with heresy, why should we be so preoccupied with it nowadays? But yeah, the, the point is, thing. Muslims. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. According, yes, according to, uh, so far, according sorry. to the Muslim, Muslim belief, uh, we Muslims believe that the Torah was given. We don't view the, the entire t Torah word for word as corrupt. No, we don't believe that. We believe there is truth in the Bible, and we believe the. I'm speaking about the Christian Bible as well. And my main point is the Christian Bible. We believe that the Christian Bible is corrupt a lot. That, to be honest with you, this is this is what we we're debating with the Christians all the time. Yeah, and for example, uh, yeah, you're telling me what you believe, point. and I'm yep. and I'm speaking from an outsider's perspective. I'm Jewish, but I'm not telling you what Jews yeah. believe. I want you to respond Rabbi, from an outsider's perspective. I mean, don't always respond okay, Rabbi, as a religious Rabbi Muslim. Asha. Rabbi Asha, can I just ask you one question? So, if, Rabbi, yeah. if, if somebody if somebody says they're Jewish and they follow the Torah only, and um, they worship, I don't know, they worship um uh, uh, I don't know a stone or something. They do idolatry, but they say they they say they they are Jewish. Are they not? Are they not doing a, uh, apostasy? Yes. Yes, sure. they are. Apostasy. I mean, they're doing idolatry. Straight idolatry. They're doing idolatry. It's yeah. there, there's a literally a law itself. against it. Yeah. So, yeah. so they're not However, worshiping Torah. But if someone believed that God so had a partner, so right? I mean, it's just one God, uh, but he split up into three or four pieces. Is he directly going against the Torah? Not necessarily. I mean, it just doesn't say it. I mean, I wish it did, but it's not so clear. It's like God is one, but I mean, it says a man shall leave his, his parents' house and be united with his wife and they shall be one. So the notion is not a foreign notion. I don't believe in the Trinity.
but I don't view it as like apostasy when the Torah doesn't really call it that. Right? I mean, I have to be honest to what, what and I'm speaking oh, so not as a Jewish person right now. I'm speaking as a student of the Bible. Oh, so, sir, so, so you don't have then to, what you your you idea? You don't have to be. No, wait, wait. Yeah. One second, let me just ask. If you, don't, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be a monotheist then to be Jewish. Is that what you're saying? No, you do. No, yes, That's you do. That's the law in the Torah. But monotheism is not divine. Okay, so, so how could you. Defined in the Torah. It's only later defined by the rabbis. No, so I mean, we're so in the Torah, it says God is one. No, yeah, but what does that really ultimately mean? Here, it means one. They, they, it's a simple Whenever language. Whenever I teach anything on the show, it I'm not one, teaching man. it as an it's, Orthodox it's Jew. I'm teaching it as someone who's familiar with the text from an outsider's perspective, because I'm talking to people who are not Jewish. So I want them to appreciate the Torah, not as a Jew, because a Jew will tell them, you have to believe this and this, and you can't question. They're questioning to begin with because they're not religious. I want them to have an intellectual connection to the actual words with doubt and all. When a Muslim talks to, talk to someone else, they talk to them like they're already Muslim. You know, you have to believe this. This is perfect. This is perfect. You know, yeah, but mute yourself. What, what I'm saying in the, in the Shema, though, I mean, we have to look at the Torah is given to primitive people in the desert who, who are like escaped slaves, right? They don't have like these deep concepts of philosophy to understand compound unities and all these things. When, when the Torah says uh, Shema and it says God is one, that's the only thing it means. There's no deeper meaning behind it because those, those people who received that message didn't have ability to even comprehend these deep philosophical meanings, right? So we there's no reason to like go into deep discussions about it. It's it's, it's simple. Right. There's more important things to fight in this world than Tawhid. I'll tell you right now. There's a lot more. Well, there's people being unalived for stupid reasons, whether we're going to worry about, oh, you believe two, you believe in one, but is it a complex unity? Because if you are, you're an evil person. It's so stupid. Ethically, it's stupid. No, 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 okay. no sir. I would disagree a lot no, on this point. Uh, I would disagree a evil, lot. No, the, 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 what's the key important thing? No, saying As evil, I said you're before, just, you're, just saying, you're just saying you're wrong. Oh, well, okay. you're evil. You're you're, not you're, to make um, it to heaven. Like, so let, let me make one argument. Evil. Yeah, Sorry. Rahi, uh, let's 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 uh, respond to Rabbi's point. Uh, uh, Rabbi, I would disagree, and we Muslims uh, uh, in general would would disagree with you because why you're saying that there are more important things than the Tawhid. No, the oneness of God is the very first thing but that doesn't mean that whenever you are you, you are you you are a believer in the oneness of god and then you are forgetting everything no allah says in the quran that he is one at the same time we are worshiping and we this is a kind of worship in islam helping the poor whenever we are helping the poor whenever uh, we are bringing peace to the to the people all of these are important points that but the belief in the oneness of god is not preventing us from doing good works it it doesn't make sense like that. You can believe whatever you uh, you want, but you can uh, still do good works and bad works. For example, there are people who do not believe in in God at all. They are doing bad things and they are doing good things. They are quite irrelevant. But the most important point is, from Islamic point of view, still one monotheist in doing good works. And if the Quran clearly condemns the unaliving of innocent people, that is clear in the Quran. Helping the poor absolutely good work do it but that doesn't contradict with each other yeah wait hold on i mean what are you responding yeah. to with the notion that the with the idea of monotheism or heresy or blasphemy doesn't literally appear in the torah or i mean I, yeah be, uh, before you said like an explanation like a yeah a blanket explanation of what islam teaches but i'm not challenging necessarily what islam teaches but my initial statement was could someone ethically keep the quran completely if he just stumbled on the notion of shirk that's it i mean that was just my point but and but let me let, let me make a, a claim here. The, now go in the other direction. So uh, while we were all saying that it doesn't like me and Asher, we were saying it doesn't matter as long as you keep the law. It doesn't matter how what your philosophical concept is. I in the way I do disagree with that because I think that it can lead to negative behavior down the road, just like uh, we have other things in the law that protects society from certain bad behaviors, like let's say, in, uh, you know, don't, like don't associate with certain types of people or don't promote certain types of behavior because in the end it leads to negative things in society. I think that having uh, these bad philosophical ideas about God and starting 
like breaking down his nature and making him into something that he's not can also lead to bad ethical behavior later, later on and destroying the belief systems, creating new beliefs, new religions that completely, you know, once you believe in, the, in a different God, who's to force you to say that the law is the same? Now you could modify the law because the God is different, therefore the law can be different. Or maybe you can just become atheist because you're going to uh, go so far into philosophy, you'll nullify everything. So I think in the way it's also a bad thing and and I think we do need to protect this correct understanding of God of God's nature so so that we maintain the rest of the religion. So on that note I I agree with you. However from a different perspective I think that the cannibalistic monotheists including Maimonides make God less less worthy of the title by saying things that God doesn't love you because to love is a limitation of God. God feels no emotion. God's not happy. God's not sad, right? You can't even relate to God, you know, like from an emotional perspective, this is, this might be philosophically superior, but you you're essentially worshiping a God that's different from the God in the Torah, you know? So it seems that people who have limited God to just, let's say three, have a pure understanding to the literal God that appears in the Torah than the rationalists who in some way have painted this, this, this motion, this non-emotional rock in heaven, you know, that, that, that doesn't get angry, that doesn't get disappointed, that doesn't need anything from you. When the Torah says that God needs us to keep commandments, he wants us to seek justice. No, Maimonides says that if you believe that, you lose your share in the world to come. So I think the rationalists in this, from this perspective, have made a bigger desecration of God's name than someone who just stuck to sola scriptura, right? But had the misunderstanding that God is possibly two in one or three in one, just in practice. Uh, uh, Rabbi, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32, verse mm -hmm. number 39, and also in the book of Isaiah, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of verses such. For example, first of all, I, I would like to know, uh, my first question is, how important is the oneness of God, which means oneness according to your understanding, to the Jewish understanding, that God is one. How important is that to you, according to your, uh, to your understanding? Another point is, if you're saying that the Christian understanding of the Trinity is still uh, not a problem, or it may not be a problem like that, then how do you view the Trinity while the Trinity is three persons, each one of them is fully God, mm. and each one of them, they have the divine qualities. That's Christian belief. How do you view that in the light of Isaiah 45, verse number 5, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32, verse number 39? Okay, so in terms of those, that we're going to have to read the verses. Um, but yeah, sure. in terms of what... Now, what does monotheism play in my life? It depends how you interpret the word echad. There's a famous rabbi, his name is Rav Herschel Schechter, that he translates the words echad, with the word echad there in the Shema, not to mean one, but unique. That makes so much more sense than just saying God is one. Who cares if God is one, if he isn't unique? Unique from one perspective, he was a God that by emulating his behavior, our surroundings and our lives would improve. He's unique from the other gods because gods back then behaved worse than people. That makes a lot, that carries a lot more ethical weight than God is one. God is one and what? I mean, okay, we're yelling that God is one, but who cares? I mean, how is that going to change the world? It's not. However, if you believe that your God is just like every other God that can't be trusted, that's not faithful, that gives over bad advice, then that would destroy our religion. So, that's what I mean. That's what I believe in, in God being one. This is why I'm not going to jump on someone who, well, you know what, you know, because Jews do the same. I have no issue talking about Jews who teach that there's 10 pieces of God. Like the 10 sefirot of God and, and these sefirot are split down into smaller parts of theme and atzilut and all this stuff. It's, it, you know, so I'll tell you throughout Jewish history, it wasn't a real notion, even in the rabbinical world, outside of Maimonides and his students. Um, there's many rabbis in the Talmud who were even corporalist, where they believed that God had a shape, not necessarily a body, 
but a shape. God wore tefillin, God wore a talis, and it wasn't an ethical quandary. But now Islam, it's all about tahid. Like it even matters. You know, um, I don't believe in a trinity. I mean, I think more when we're relating to God, because it's true. If you keep on splitting God up into pieces and in some way start to teach that this portion of God could no less than that portion of God, that's already, you know, I mean, it's a slippery slope. Uh, but is it, it, could the religion still move forward ethically with someone believing that? Absolutely. Uh, like, should we cook, like kick these people out of the community? Absolutely not. So that's, that's, you know, are there verses in the Torah that point to God being one in the sense? Okay. But there's a verse in the Torah that said, up on the mountain, you saw no shape, you saw no image. Okay, fine. God is not a man that he should lie, that he should change his mind. Okay, fine. But then it says, it says, Hashem ish milchama. Now that's literal. God is a man of war. God took you out with a yad ha hazaka, a strong that's hand, strong. right? I mean, does God have a strong, does God have fingers? You know, I don't believe that, but that's what it says. So if someone took it literally, God's going to punish them now. God wants you to punish them. If he takes the word of God, literally that you believe that we corrupted. I don't know why, but what's the incentive of us putting stuff in there that we don't even believe nowadays, but whatever, you know, I'm just trying to put some reason into religion because I want smart people to come to my religion. I don't want people who just want to be told what to do. I mean, I, although I want my women to obey me, right? Wink, wink. Uh, I don't think God wants that. God doesn't want you to check your brains at the door. That's it. So, so, yeah. so, so, Sir, Robert, so Robert, and I, I ask you about Isaiah 45, verse number 5, and Deuteronomy 32, 39, and the view. So looking both at both of them, and also the Trinity, the three persons, three co-equal persons, like that. Yeah. I don't really care about what happens in Isaiah. I try to limit my theology to only the five books of Moses. So, like, if you want to quote it, um, you could quote, like, what Deuteronomy. Oh, okay. So uh, don't you believe that in Isaiah, God is directly speaking? Uh, Isaiah 45, verse number five, specifically. <laughs> no. No, no. I, I, okay. I don't believe no. that the books we, of the prophets are written wrote by it. God, by the way. I mean, I believe they're there to give you a historical account of the life and times of the prophets. Throughout Jewish history, no one pointed to a book of Isaiah and said, this is going to happen in the future. I mean, that was only much, much recent in terms of with Rashi and stuff like that. We know who wrote these books. Like, why should we assume that the writers of these books that for the most part wrote it from memory are in some way giving us an accurate account of anything? But the simple fact that a prophet can add anything to the Torah means that if you just stick with the Torah, you're good enough. Okay, so in, in Deuteronomy, it's, uh, God is saying, even I, I am he. Uh, before me, there was no one created, and after me, there is no one God. I am God, and there is no God beside me. So uh, putting that into the Christian understanding, for example, if that is the, the Father, context. right? Yeah, in the context, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that is the Father speaking, then where does the Son and also the Holy Spirit What is the context? Uh, wait, 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 hold on. I'm not justifying the Trinity the at all. I'm justifying shirk. Shirk is a partnership, meaning that it's still yep. one God, but there's a partnership in it. I'm not trying to justify the Trinity at all. I'm saying if someone happened to believe that there's three or one, this is really how Jews teach it. Jews who believe in the Sefirot believe it's one God with different emanations. I think that's philosophically primitive, right? But I don't think it's ethically damaging. I'm not trying to justify what the Trinity is. I'm not trying to justify Christianity. I'm just trying to yeah, but the, the Trinity, just say the Trinity is shit. And the Trinity is shit. The Trinity is partnerships, though. The no, Trinity is shit. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but you're trying to make the point that because the Torah says that before me, there were no other gods created. Again, before me, the, it's called the Trinity, the triune unity, because it's one. You know, so you have to contend with that point that it still claims to be one. Christians don't walk around saying they believe in three gods. I wish they did. It'd be a lot easier to classify. But by the simple fact that they say, no, we believe in one, means we have to contend with that. No, yeah, that's a problematic for them. For example, they're saying that they believe in one God. If they would say, if they would say that there are three gods, then that would have made sense. Why? Because there are three, and each one of them is. Well, that's one, what you believe. But they God. don't say it's. They don't three. say that. Yeah, and they don't say that. But that doesn't make sense. For example, how, right, how much it they makes want sense to say to them. It makes that's sense. the thing. It makes sense to them, and they justify it pretty well. I mean, I don't agree with their justifications, but they do make a claim to it. They make an attempt to justify it. They're just not convinced, and like most of them, like most of them could be convinced later on. But it's such a minute point. 
such a minute point that I think if you would just leave them alone on it, they'll probably end up adopting some legal code, which is my biggest issue with the average Christian, that they are a bit lawless or they're not able to articulate where their laws actually come from. That, that's a bigger war to fight than, than like splitting hairs on the complexity of God. Yeah, that's where I agree yeah, with us for 100% that when you guys doing uh, Dawa and debating Christians, you, you're you're debating them on the Trinity where you should be debating them on why they canceled the law of Moses. Because if they believe in the God the, from the Torah, they should be keeping all of the Torah. And this is where they're uh, fully abandoning the God and violating it. And that, that's where they would be considered idolaters for, for, avoid, for dropping the law. Like how they conceptualize God in their mind is a much smaller thing. So... That's the that's the only argument here, yeah, right? Yeah. Where that you know the the concept yeah, of the argument is wrong. The concept should be uh, not whether they split God into three, um, but why they cancel everything that God told them to do prior to that. Yes, exactly. We do we we do debate the Christians uh, because uh, according even according to their book, whether nobody knows who who wrote um, Matthew, yeah. but if you're taking that that Matthew wrote Matthew for the sake of argument, then Jesus in Matthew chapter five, <coughs> chapter five, verse number, uh, verse number uh, seventeen to twenty, he is saying that the law cannot be relieved. Even a dot cannot be changed. Okay, if a dot cannot be changed, then how how come Paul comes and he's saying that no, he nailed it to the cross. It makes no sense. Paul didn't so, say that, but nonetheless, Muslims. It's funny to me when Muslims say that because Muslims eat uh, things that uh, Jews don't. Eat. So, like, what's your point? Yeah, my my point is that Paul is the one who is responsible for no, uh, breaking I, I and going against. Completely, but please answer. I can, please, I can prove it to you. I can prove it to you right now. Well, can you answer my question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. What is your point with that? When you, as a Muslim, mm -hmm. don't eat the same things that Jews eat. But but Muslims answer are not the under the same law. Hold on, I want him to answer the question. What the Jews eat? My point, our point is that Paul was a liar. That's the crystal no, clear. See he went a lot against, against the Jesus, teachings of Jesus. Every time you avoid the question and you were... Uh oh Your mic is muted. Courtney got muted for accidentally. Uh, what, uh, something happened. She probably got a call. No, but I, I, I disagree with her claim because Muslims never claim to be under the law of Moses, but Christians do. So this is where the disagreement is, right? If, if Muslims came and said, we, we follow the law of Moses, but then they changed it, I would have a big disagreement with that. But you guys yeah. don't do that. You don't make that claim. Uh, Christians no, claim that, that they follow the Torah, and, but, they, but they don't keep it. And that's where I have a problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're we're saying the Quran is the law which is given to to the Muslims to the to the world for the people. And for the sake of argument, if if whenever we are speaking about the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of uh, Paul in the Bible in their Bible, then they have a lot of problems because Paul is going against ex directly against. For example, going and telling the uh, the people that circumcision is no more needed. Correct. I mean, there's he, he even says that the law of Moses was the curse, right? Yes, exactly. And he was saying that it's a curse, okay, and okay. Jesus nailed it to the cross. Okay, thank you so Let much. It was a good time. It's like, you know, but this is a philosophical show, a religious philosophical show, which for sure doesn't exist on TikTok, where we can discuss our religions from an outsider's perspective, which is a perspective that counts, because by definition, if you're not growing, you're shrinking. So if we can't make a case to an unbeliever, then what's our religion worth? So this is why I answer all questions, not as an Orthodox Jew, like, or then I would just be quoting what the Talmud says, but from an inquisitive ethical individual who's, who's looking for an ethical outlet in life. And that, from my perspective, the best one is Judaism. Yeah. And uh, one point, time, one point I will be discussing with, oh, isn't that, sorry. Muslims do this all the time and they do this to try and get Jews on their side against Christians, as opposed to seeing <laughs> I'm not stupid. I know what they're doing. And, and, the, and the key is this. Why is it that you're going to make that argument against Christians when you yourself don't even observe the same laws that Jews do? Please just answer the question. 
Okay, okay, so Christian said that you, you, that you guys claim that. No, 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 hold on. Who answered? Who answered? Y yeah, we don't. Yeah, we, we don't claim to follow the law of Moses. You, you Christians do, Muhammad. Muhammad, thank you for answering. I appreciate the honesty. Christians say the exact same thing. So now what? Yeah, but you follow, yeah, the, you follow, the, you follow the Old Testament. We don't. Like what? What? <laughs> what do you, you 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 claim you follow the Old Testament? You believe in the Old Testament? You follow the Torah, but then at the same time you say you don't you don't follow that you, you um, you've changed God's laws. We don't. Wait claim a minute, hold on. You do you not do you not believe in appeal to some of the the people of the book, which would be the Tanakh? We we don't believe in the Tanakh today. We don't believe in that. We we, we believe there's some truth in it, but we don't believe in the same one today. Okay, so then the, the same thing could be said. You, for Christians. You, no, you do believe in it. You do believe in it. You say, are you saying you don't believe in it at all? No, I'm a Torah observant Christian, but not all Christians are. The point that I'm getting okay, at is okay, you're, but, okay, you're not but, you're not holding the same energy when you're you're doing this just to suck up to Jews. I'm not stupid. I know what how, you're doing. How? 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 Like we don't. I'm, look, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying we don't claim to follow the law of Moses in the Torah. You guys do, but Paul no, changed. No, they don't. That. No, Christians don't. That's what you're not getting. Christians say that we are not Jews. We are not bound by the law. That's why they don't keep it. But do you not believe? Do you not believe in the Torah? Do you I not believe say, it's from God? I do, but now we're, okay. we're, that's not what I'm discussing. Let's stick okay, to the okay, wait. I, no, I'm sticking to her. But if you believe the Torah is the complete word of God, if you believe that, then why are you changing the word of God? That's what I'm saying. Why are you changing the law? We don't believe that. That's that's why we. That's how we can make that claim. Like we because don't they, exactly, we don't eat shrimp. We they can, are we not, they shrimp. don't believe that they are Jews. They are Jews even say this. This is what Jews even affirm this. But then Jews get mad that Christians don't keep the law when Jews are affirming you're not Jewish. Don't keep the law. Yeah, that's that's a culture problem. That's nothing that has to do with religion. Yes, absolutely, it does. Talk, I know what, this is uh, not complicated. You're making it complicated because it suits your argument in the foot. No, it doesn't. In, what you're not, what you're not, oh, what you're not understanding is that completely. you believe in the Torah. But listen, listen. What you're saying is you believe in the Torah. You believe it's the word of God. God set out some commandments in the Torah. Set out some laws. Then Paul came along and changed it. But you still believe in both from God. You still believe both scriptures are from God. But one guy came and said, you know, God, hey, 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 guys, God's changed the law, of course, which means God's changed. We as Muslims, we don't follow that same scripture. That's what, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So we don't, we don't, so we can make the claim that, of course, we don't eat shrimp like Jews, you know, uh, Jews. So we eat shrimp, but Jews are not allowed to eat shrimp, for example. We can, we can say that because we don't believe that, you know, the Torah, the scripture itself is from God itself. But you guys do believe that scripture is from God, which means you're saying God has changed. That's not, that's no, not, you're, that's you're not understanding. You're, like, I'm not sure why you're not getting this. Christians do not believe that the law of Moses applies to them because they are Gentiles. So therefore, the same that's way not, that no, you that's don't not, believe that the law of Moses applies to Muslims... They also don't. So why are you not judging yourself by the same standard that you judge mainstream Christians? No, man. So that is true. Christians okay. do believe that. They do believe that. Uh, Achie, just give me time. Uh, the, the, the answer is in the Bible. Paul is saying that every person, that the law is a curse. He's condemning the law by naming the law a curse. Hey, Mama, Again, he's you, saying... Whoever's not talking, can you... Because I can barely hear him. Can you please mute? Mansoor, this is Mansoor. There is a lot of echo. I don't know. No, it's okay. This is Mansur speaking, right? So Paul is saying he's very clear in the Bible in Galatians and also in Corinthians uh, that the, the, the law is curse. And Jesus no, came in. Galatians 3 verse 10, the word et in Greek, in Greek just means outside of. It actually is a quote from Deuteronomy. So it's essentially so, Paul is saying those who don't keep the law are under a curse. Because it is written, cursed is anyone who does not continue in keeping all that is written. That's a yeah, but what is his about. main point? I, 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 I'm not even. I have not even finished that my proves, point. That just proves our point. Yes. If anybody goes, wait. If 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 anybody got that goes. If, Listen, let me explain. Wait, if anybody this, goes against you know the Torah about the New Testament, and you certainly don't know Greek. So the point that I'm trying to tell you is, first, you're reading an English translation of Paul's words, okay, from the Greek. If you look at the Greek, the word ek, ek, it just means out of. 
And it is absolutely true. Anyone that does not continue in the works of law is under a curse. What is, why is this? Because curse is anyone who does not continue to do all the things that are written in this book. Okay, we know this. However, before the Torah was given, people were still sinning before there was a law, yes? Law was given at Mount Harsinai, yeah? Mount Sinai, yeah? Yes, okay, I'll answer for you. Prior <laughs> to that, there was sin still. So in the same capacity that that happened, mainstream Christians would believe also that is the same capacity that they would be under a, quote, curse, which is the curse of death, which is why the entire of New Testament discusses Yeshua redeeming you from the curse of death. Do you understand? I want you to, to listen to me when I'm responding Do to you. Do you understand? Okay, no, I need to oh, know if uh, you understood. Yeah, I understood my points, sister. Your your no, points, you and I'm responding to you. Understand my points, not your points. Yeah, it is a preaching, sister. It is a preaching, and I understand no, all of because preaching, I'm brother. It's not. It. I literally just gave you how to properly interpret a passage. I've given you four passages that way you could affirm the original intent of the author. That's not preaching. I live. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Those are words from Wait, the forget, Tanakh. Forget that. Forget. forget. Okay, forget the New Testament word. New Testament says, but doesn't the Tanakh tell you that obviously if you if you if you go against the uh, uh, the commandments, then you're cursed, right? Go against the what? The laws. The laws. Yes, yes, but not. Okay, so if you go before against before there was a law, yes or no? What was that? Did not Adam and Eve sin before there was a law given? Yes. Yeah. If yes. you're listening to us, so I, I can respond. Okay, but so, if okay, you're wait, 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 now hold on let me okay so don't, don't cut my so, answer wait, wait hold don't on wait i didn't ask my I'm question not hold on. i'm not done don't cut my answer off. <laughs> don't sound yes, no. okay yes absolutely. Of the time. let me give you an example obviously adam and eve sinned okay adam and eve and their children knew how to bring an offering well how did they know this someone had to have told them how to do it that is not written in our in the torah do you understand? Okay, so therefore the things that were not written became a part of the law. This is why some Jews, not all, believe that there was specific laws prior to actually being given the law at Sinai. For example, tzitziot, that was not something that was given at like, oh, Genesis 1, right? This is obviously not how it works. But there are things that became a part of what is given to the children of Israel, like murdering right that was something you should not do but there was no law on it until it was given at science okay well, okay so how okay so how, how wait so how do you interpret that interpret that verse then when god says if you go against the law you're cursed how would you interpret that what does that mean to you well now we have the written law we know what it is yeah but what does that mean to you though what, is, is, okay, what law is god talking about then? i keep the law Okay, okay, but but okay, but what does that what does that what does that verse mean to you? What, what does it mean to you? I've already explained what it means. You didn't explain what it means. You went to Adam and Eve. I'm talking about the yes, laws in the Torah. If you go they, against the laws in the Torah, you're cursed. Sinned, what does that mean to you? What do you mean? I, it's a sin. You break the law. It is a sin. Okay, it's a sin. So why did Paul sure. break it then? Why did what? Why did Paul break it then? Why did Paul break what? Be specific. The law. Give me an example. The law. For example, um, for example, you know, um, eating pork, for example, um, circumcision. Like wait, 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 wait. Eating pork. Wait a minute. What, what are you talking about? Paul went to go make a, a, a vow to prove not only was he not teaching others, but he himself also observed the law. He was not teaching them to break it. Again, if you believe that Paul spoke against the law, then you must have, you must state that he spoke that against Gentiles, essentially having a very Jewish concept that Gentiles are not bound to keep the whole totality of the law. Okay, but well, he according never to who? That Jews should not. He even took a vow. You can't take parts of the New Testament and use it against the other parts. You can't do that. And if you do, I would say that's unequal weights and measures, and you're cherry picking. Okay, are you allowed to eat? Are you allowed to eat pork in Christianity? 
I well, in Christianity or in the or in my opinion, which one? Not your opinion, based on based on the New Testament. Based on the New Testament, in my personal opinion, I do not believe one should eat pork. That's my personal opinion on the interpretation of the New Testament. Now, yeah, but, is that, but that's the thing. It shouldn't be an opinion. It shouldn't is, be is an opinion. Is that an opinion? Good. Yeah. God, God told us, God okay, wait, wait, told wait, wait, us wait. not to do it. It shouldn't be an opinion. God said not to do it. it I'm, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, that, right. But that's the thing. That's what we're talking about. You say that, uh, go ahead, you go in, enjoy. Enjoy your pork. So wait, it's in the Torah. So what do you say to that? It's not a so, that's what. That's why our rabbi <laughs> comes in. That's why our rabbi comes in. Oh, don't eat pork. Don't eat pork unless it. But it does taste good, though. It. <laughs> so can a Muslim acknowledge that pork tastes good and just say not eat it because God said not to eat it? Bro, that full, that, that that shit full of diseases, bro. <laughs> no, no, yeah. But does it taste good though? I don't know, bro. I've never ate it before. Ah, uh, well, I mean, hey, you should try it and then come back. <laughs> I'm, that I'm, I'm, not gonna eat that, bro. I'm not gonna eat something that God tells me not to eat, bro. That's crazy, bro. No, I no, no, I'm kidding. Like, obviously, don't do it. But I'd like to talk to someone who converted to Islam to see if they would be honest enough to say that pork is delicious, but we don't eat it because God says not to eat it. Yeah, but what's wrong with that, though? What's wrong with that? So with wait, what? wait, Rabbi, Rabbi, I think your whole point, Rabbi, is that as long as you, as long as long if you read a scripture and it fulfills your desires, that's a scripture you should follow. I think that's your point. That's what you're trying to say. No, right? no, 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 not at all. I mean, I believe that it's good to join groups. It's good if you're looking for a belief system and, and, and Judaism's not a, available, you live and only Islam's available, become Muslim. Same thing with Christians. Um, however, we first have to be honest and then we can give our opinion on anything else. So we have to yeah, understand things from what, a literal bro? perspective and then you can understand it from the religion's perspective, right? There's the, mac there's the micro and there's the macro, but for some reason, for Muslims, there's only the macro. Yeah, Rabbi, yeah. what time is um Shabbat? Well, Shabbat is at seven forty. Seven forty. Candle lighting. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have eighteen minutes after candle lighting. Uh, so right now it's seven fifteen. Okay. Wow, it's so much uh, earlier for you. For me, it's at uh, eight thirty. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm in South Florida. Yeah, and it's at eight thirty in Michigan. Yeah, I was just asking to see how much time we had, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I do only have about like 20 minutes and I have to go get ready for Shabbat. Can we acknowledge that Muslims are not holding themselves to the same standard that they hold Christians to? You just Ashley? proved yourself wrong the whole time. Like, no, literally. I didn't. Why would we hold that standard? Yeah, but why would we hold that standard? Please, please explain that to me. Why would we hold that standard? I can actually we don't tell him why. I can, are you a Muslim, M. Daddy? You Muslim? Alhamdulillah. So we, there was a Muslim guy on yesterday and he brought up a hadith where he said, what well, the Torah was true. Can I read that? Well, can you read it for me? I have it. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, what, what, what do you mean? Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, but so, but uh, yeah, while you're pulling that up, my whole point with, with Corny was that uh, we don't follow the script, we don't follow your scripture, uh, the, the Torah, the scripture that you have now. That's the that's the thing. So, we we can say we don't follow the law, that law, at least that law. We can say that. You guys can't say that. Well, so, let's move this discussion. Let's move this discussion. Otherwise, you'd be, contradict otherwise you'd be contradicting your own. Your own dude it's going right over your head i'm not i'm not trying to insult your intelligence but it's absolutely it, no it really it, my, it really my isn't it, it really, it's going it, no over it really isn't because you already admit it we are muslims no, we don't keep the I, law I never, because we don't believe I never it was given that. to muslims so no, in the we, same we way christians it. also being quote gentiles do not believe that the law of moses with all of its rituals and food laws were given unto them and Jews, yeah, forward, Jews today tell Christians, you can eat whatever you want. So you have all three religions saying the same thing, and yet you're going to condemn Christians for not uh, stopping eating pork? No, because it contradicts me. I, I, that's why I asked you the question. I asked you, you a question. Forward. What? What? What, do you, what does that verse mean? To you? Rabbi, Rabbi, I said, move forward. When, you know, if if you go against the law, if you go, we want, let me just ask one question now. Move forward. That's why I asked you that question. When the law, when the when the Torah said to you, 
if you're going if you go against the law you're cursed what do you, what does that mean to you that's why i asked you that but you couldn't answer that i asked you what does that mean to you i mean it doesn't if it doesn't mean nothing to you then no i think she responded opinion based now wait I mean, she responded according to her interpretation that it actually meant that you had to keep the law. I mean, that was her response. Right? Yeah, most Christians don't hear like that. Yeah. Well, Rabbi, I'm so glad you, you brought this scripture up. I, had a, I have a question for you that I, I was reading Torah yesterday, and I had a question. I feel like I saw evidence of metaphysics in Torah, and I wanted to ask you about it. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean you think? There's a lot of metaphysics in Torah. I mean, I mean God is metaphysical, <laughs> you know? Okay, fine. All right. I mean, is it just me or or uh... everybody's getting disconnected? Looks like. Uh, yeah, I guess it was the AK forty-seven. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rabbi, what's your plans for Shabbat? I mean, I'm going to my son, like to Chabad here with my son in in ten minutes. So, um, yeah. You know what? what about after that? Any dinner plans? Lunch plans? Yeah, I have dinner at home. Yeah, you see, uh, and I go to places that I don't agree with everyone else on. By the way, I mean, I don't agree with Chabad. I mean, I like their chillins, you know, and their and their your Fabregans. Uh, but yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I found it. It's I'm actually. Way. I like. I. Uh, I'm. I'm not a Chabadnik, but I go to Chabad because it's five minute walking distance from me. And a lot of my friends uh, go to Chabad, so why am I gonna, you know, go somewhere else, right? That's, you, you go where, where whatever community is and what's close to you. Hey, Rabbi, I found it. It's uh, Deuteronomy eighteen nineteen, literally right after he says. Um... He he's going to Google, I think, to to read it, and then. Uh... You, you can't leave the app when you're reading something, otherwise you go mute. Oh, I didn't know. I, I had no idea. Yes, it's just 18 and 19. After he says the prophet um, he, who doesn't listen to his words, he would have to give an, give, an, give an account for himself to me. Does that mean once we die, God said no, no. we have to give an account for ourselves to him? Oh, I don't know what that means exactly. I mean, it just means that... They're going to have to deal with God's wrath to some extent. But I use that to show that Deuteronomy chapter 18 is not talking about prophet. That it's not just talking about one prophet. Because then it right, would yeah, be I agree. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I, I agree. mean, it's clearly talking about prophets in general. And it's the only chapter right. we have in the whole Torah that tells us to accept prophets when they come. Now, right. that doesn't exclude, you know, um, your prophet necessarily. I mean, whatever that prophet may be. But it, it's for sure not limited just to one person. Because the people who say that will just say no. But this verse is saying, but this is not the way we read the Bible. We don't just take one verse and build a whole doctrine out of it, right? We have to read it in context. Right, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I am that prophet. Could be, possibly. I mean, the Kalashnikova Rebbe. That's <laughs> a name I appropriated from this guy, Fauci. Anyways, all right, next. Moving forward, guys. And we have 10 I'm minutes. Curious. So one one thing there's some uh, simply live in the comments said that men don't love their daughters. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Yeah, but like, why? Why? I don't know why, but it just to me it's just it's so like uh, hilarious and ridiculous. Like th there's nothing in my life more important than my daughter. Like it, it's yeah, such yeah, a weird. See the context. And what's the context? Somebody told her this that they love their sons more than their daughters. It's just like. Oh, well, I mean, they bring different, that we love them in different ways. I mean, just like we love our wives differently also, right? I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, like my daughter was my first child. You know, my son was my second. And it's, it's. Uh, I mean, girls are sweeter. I mean, I remember having my daughter on my shoulders when she was little, and it was just like, you know, like my little girl. Well, my son, I'm always like, I mean, throwing him into the fire, trying to toughen him up. So it's two different like, relationships. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, whatever, I, I take my daughter shooting also, but I want her to remain feminine and I want my boy to be a monster and then tame and harness that and focus it to what's good. So, yeah. Uh, I, I make my daughter a monster. My daughter has a blue belt in jujitsu. I take her shooting. She, you know, she, she does everything. Yeah. I mean, I want my daughter to be able to get married. This is why I don't do stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not That's worried about that. I'm married and I can do all of those things. Yeah, yeah, you're in Alabama. It's different. <laughs> no, because I'm in a Jewish community. You know, it's going to be like... Uh, okay, well, that's yeah, not true. Jewish guys aren't too manly to begin with, unfortunately. 
you know, so I mean, they'd probably be attracted to that. But uh, anyways, like from that perspective, I believe Islam is superior. In terms of, of rearing strong young boys and feminine young girls, Islam does a lot better the job than Judaism. Not not Torah and Halakha, but in what you do. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, because most Jewish kids are like a bunch of little girls, unfortunately. Of course, the Muslim's going to agree. You know, <laughs> agree to something that's not beneficial to your religion. That shows integrity. All right. That you can't do. What was. All right, next. Because you're yeah. bringing Goyish agenda into Judaism. Oh, well, it's because you're on the left. I mean, for you. But to be a feminine male is to be an ideal. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What's the Goyish agenda? Is there like a third gender that just Goyish have or something? I don't understand. Matt, what, can you explain what's a Goyish agenda? Here, look, like people on the left who try to read the Bible believe that King David, the archetypical male, was a homosexual. You know, so of course they're going to think that to be more feminine means to be more King David-like. Well, it's because of his relationship with his good buddy. I think yeah, it was a little bit of... Uh... No, he had a bromance. All right, bromance. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Arab... Yeah, I, I don't think it's this big of a deal. Yeah, it's really not that big of a deal. Hey, look, in the Arab show, anyone who's ever like gone to the Arab market uh, in, in Jerusalem or anything, the Arabs, they sit in each other's lap, they play with each other's hair, and it seems a lot of gay, but these are like real masculine That's guys. That's weird. No, it's weird for us <laughs> Americans. It's not weird. It's not weird. Yeah, when a man knows we don't think like that if a man is really you know we don't have any type of issue like that it's not really nothing yeah, it's you know, like, i love you dog anything. i love you dog right yeah we don't yeah we don't look at it oh saying yeah, it's not weird dog us. is different than <laughs> sitting in a man's lap i'm sorry and playing with each other's hair you're like a little bit of slap ass slap ass i, I don't know about I, yeah we do we do do that Men, no, men, are men are weird. Men are weird. Men are weird. Men are weird. Y'all are. are wow. Weird. Well, in 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 the Orthodox world, you know, like in weddings, the guys guys dance with guys and girls dance with girls. Also in Korea, they do this, by the way. It's kind of whatever. When they do it, it's Absolutely. kind of good. Jewish weddings look like the the littest weddings I ever I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, it's not the same type of dancing, though. I mean, it's not like you have some rabbi twerking in front of some uh, whatever. You no. know, it's like. Circle dancing. When you get a bunch of drunk guys who lift up one guy in the chair and start dancing around with him in the chair over their heads and then they drop him, that, that, that's some lit weddings. There you go. <laughs> World you that's, <laughs> that's what's up. All right, guys, come on, keep it going. We don't want dead air here. So we have five minutes. How does a rabbi know about twerking? <laughs> uh, because I live and I breathe. And I grew up in Miami, so there you go. We invented twerking. Cool, Miami. What about yeah, Jews? Ask you a question. Of course. I mean, two light crew. I mean, booty shake music. I mean, that's from Miami, though. <laughs> yeah. Question. Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. I just want to ask you. So, um, so deep, 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 based on um, religion, like, uh, if you like somebody choosing a religion, do you base that on? how somebody feels like it should be like on, on their basic subjective opinion. Is that, is that what you think? To a certain extent, I believe that every person is born with the basic tense of morality. This is how God could reward you for choosing the proper path. Because one could say, well, I was born Muslim. I had a Jewish education. This is why I went that way or that way. I stuck with this religion because the religion told me that God was right and God was the truth and, and, and that the Torah is that the Torah or the Quran was true. That's not good enough. By definition, people would never leave less ethical belief systems for more ethical belief systems if the only way we know of what right is wrong, what right is right and wrong is wrong, is what that text tells us, that right is right and wrong is wrong. No. Everyone has a basic sense of morality to be able to determine on a basic, le on a basic level what right and wrong is, enough to get them to a more sophisticated belief system that's going to drag them the rest of the way. Meaning, religion doesn't make man good. Religion makes man better. That means if you're a crappy person, 
and you come to religion, your religion is going to look crappy. But if you're a decent individual and you're looking for that ethical outlet in religion, you're going to shine that much more. So this is why you have crappy Jewish people and and and, and crappy Muslims and crappy Christians, you know, um, and not everyone's perfect because you have that basic sense of morality. And in Judaism, we correlate this with the seven laws of Noah, that we believe that that's the bare minimum that God uses to separate man from the animal. Now, not exactly. I mean, this is just a rabbinical interpretation, but the concept is the one I'm focusing on here. That the only reason God could punish, well, let's say Sodom and Gomorrah or the people in the time of Noah was because it was a bare minimum of decency that they were violating. Yeah, it's a it's the statement I think we have. I think it's in Talmud where it says that the same rain falls on the weeds and on the flowers. All right, so it basically it, you need to take that message of God, but you also need to to be the, the good person. Otherwise, you could corrupt that message and turn it into something evil. So what's your response to that, Mohammed? I mean, to what I said, at least. Um, yeah, that, 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 make, that makes sense in a way, but, um, but I think, what, I think what, would, what would make more sense is if we, like, um, theologically try to find the truth and then base your morality on that. Because, because then, if, you, if we use your standards, if you're saying everybody's born with a baseline morality, um, yeah, but you know, what that, criteria you would you be using to find that truth? I mean, if not morality. So, for example, like um, I'd use criteria. For example, um, if um, like like um, lo lots of things, like prophecies, evidences, like um, things that come to true, like a lot, lots of different things. Like to, so, miracles, to, essentially. To, not just yeah, miracles as well. Not just miracles, but also like also like for example, like um. If the scriptures, you know, stay the same for a very long time as well, till the same day, if the scriptures doesn't, doesn't. Well, things yeah. like this, you know, things like that. So basically, you know, like, he's promoting Islam again. No, 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 no. I don't think he's promoting it's Islam. It's not that. I mean, I'm just I mean, he's saying that's why that's most Muslims choose that path over another one. I don't think Jews. I mean, that's something rational that's nowadays. But in the time of of the Exodus, you're telling me people cared of 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 the consistency of scripture? No, they saw a good God that cared about them and gave them a higher standard to aspire to by by giving them laws and they saw everything else. And it was like, where else are they gonna go? With this civilized, ethically yeah, superior group of people or these people here like worshiping stones and, 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 and roaches and like the sand on your feet. So, I mean, it's easier nowadays to split hairs and say, because we we're entrenched in a society that that biblical values are all around us right torah biblical values and it's easy to say i'm going to choose the islamic flavor to that or the christian flavor but judaism came before this right we chose god from the beginning because of ethics now you're ethical what well, the average person who converts to islam was ethical when he came to islam in the vast majority of cases but he's in some way trying to polish away his philosophical outlook of god you know, so they either choose Christianity or Islam. Eh, you know, it seems like you can't go wrong with sticking with what's older. If if these other two religions just brought eth um, yeah, but, narrative and metaphysics to the table. Yeah, but isn't logic more important than ethics when it comes to choosing religion? Like, isn't it? Logic. Cause that, because because logic is you know you can't you can't like you know logic is not it's it's not it's not subjective. Like, like there's there's only one truth. The truth truth is universal. There's only one truth, and okay. You can't like you can't like delete logic. You can't just get rid of it. But in most like emotions and you know ethics and stuff, that's just subjective to someone's opinion. Like that can just change easily. But that's why we use that's why we need to use logic and rationality to come to truth. And that's what I believe. Then then we should then we should base our ethics and morality off what we came to truth with using our logic. Otherwise, yeah, it's yeah. Not, so we're just, we're just all confused then. So I respect that, but it depends what you're gauging with that logic. I'm trying to gauge ethics with that logic. Is the same God, is it logical to assume that being that the same God who told you not to unalive people is the same God who told you not to eat shrimp, now suddenly the same God has changed his mind. That seems a little illogical, right? For it to be the same God who said he doesn't change, 
I would gauge it from that perspective. I mean, that would stop me from becoming a Muslim, not, not help me, you know. But anyways, hey, look, I have to go because it's 7.30. I have to go to show. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. And um, yeah, follow the host, guys. Uh, Thanks. Take care, man.